behind the scenes Now we just see everything we believe Yo, what's happening YouTube fam? This is your boy Jay Money here and I got a little discussion video. There's going to be about two of them this week. Um, and they're going to revolve around the same uh, thing. They're going to revolve around the promo cards. Um, today's is just going to be just the natural counters to these cards. And the next one will be a more in-depth discussion on the problem with cards like these because it's just not just these cards but it's essentially cards that everybody are generally uh you know things that everybody are generally excited about that would on paper seem to fix the game if that makes any sense because um a lot of people are aware that cards like these you know with you know become equally as much of a problem as the problems they solve so you know that might confuse a lot of people but again that's a completely different video for you know later on this week so with that being said there's only two cards i want to talk about and that is uh dark ruler no more which for some reason seems to be everybody's favorite pick on what's going to fix the format but Honestly, if you're a combo player, you know, you obviously can see that, you know, the big meteor, Nibiru, is actually the biggest problem amongst these three cards, simply for the fact that it has extremely limited counter options. There's extremely limited ways of counterplay from that card, simply because it activates and it resolves in the hand, so you can't call by the grave it. Um, because of its uh, particular summon condition for it to be live, you can't hit it with Gamma unless you have Lambia. But at that point, you're literally, did, you know, just forced to keep Lambia on the board. This is also assuming you hard drew Gamma, and it, there just seems like no way to stop that card. And it seems like once that card resolves, you kind of just lose. And you know, and that's that's not very that's not very really much a good thing either. Because it means that, you know, you would be discouraged from playing combo decks. And some people would think that's a good thing, but I don't let my own personal bias uh, cloud my own judgment. And what do I mean by this? Well, a lot of people know I can't stand decks like True Dracos, Alter Guys, Subterra Gurus because of all the floodgates they play. But I still understand that that is a play style that some people prefer to play. And it should be a viable play style in the game. All forms of playstyle should be viable in the game, uh, period, point blank. All playstyles should be able to compete, no questions asked. And so that is my unbiased opinion. Whatever playstyle you may choose to pick up, it's available to you and you should be able to play with that strategy and you should be able to compete with that strategy. You know, even though I may not agree with it. So, with that being said, the, the hand trap, the um, dimension shifter, um, I like the card simply because it's powerful, but it does have its own check and balance. One, you have to have control no cards in your graveyard, which means you cannot drop any other hand traps prior to it. Not to mention, after you resolve this card, you can't drop cards like Effect Veiler, uh, Ghost Ogre, and things like that because those cards need to go to the graveyard. Um, so the only hand traps you really start playing with if you choose to run a card like that would be Thanos and Ash Blossom. And the effect lasts until the end of the next turn. So it's not a completely one-sided effect. You know, because that's the last thing you need. You know, an effect that powerful should not be that one-sided, especially if it's on turn zero. You know, a lot of people know how I feel about turn zero floodgates. Just turn zero, like very, very first turn of the duel, because it can just win games uh, outright. But, you know, in this sense, I think this is fine because it's not just for that turn. It's for both players' turns. So if I'm playing a combo deck and I decide to drop this card, then my stuff is going to get banished on my turn when I decide to combo off. So you have to be really careful. You can't just recklessly play this card. So I like the design. It has a check and balance. Now... A lot of people are scared about the spell card, which is one of the two cards we're going to talk about today. Dark Ruler No More. It has a check and balance of its own. 
and that's what I like about the card. Only monster effects cannot be activated in response to that card. Um, so let's go over some of the uh, counters that can be played. People automatically look to Solemn Judgment as the first option. You can do that if you really want to, but I find Solemn Judgment is a very easy card to bait out. Um, so there's other options such as Anti-Spell Fragrance. Anti-Spell Fragrance um, does a great job of keeping a card like that in check. Keep in mind, it is a normal spell. It is not a quick play spell. Thank God it is not a quick play spell. So if you side three copies of Anti-Spell, it is not only effective against that, but you know, with these cards, you're going to expect a lot more Sky Striker in the game. So that can also effectively slow down Sky Strikers, which is kind of what you want. So, you know, there's options there. Um, there's other things such as uh, Pure Order, it's a one though. Um, there's also things like Spell Canceler, which even though it's a monster, um, it's like Jinzo to where it prevents you from even activating spells in the first place. So the card's turned off. And even if for some reason that clause wasn't there, it specifically says the effects of all other spells are negated. So that is not an activated effect. So, you know, that card wouldn't resolve anyway. So if you have things like Mannequin Cat and, you know, people are playing Droll Lockbird because if any of y'all have watched the past few videos, a lot of people were dropping Droll on me. So, you know, if you can fit Mannequin Cat in your deck and summon out a Droll Lockbird, you can summon a Spell Canceler from the deck and, you know, and have it supported by a board. It could be good to go. Now amongst all this, even if you don't want to play any of this stuff, the card is just like Night Beam. So what do I mean by this? So since you cannot respond monster effects directly to that card, you can activate any quick play spell in the game and then chain another monster effect like most commonly Hot Red Dragon Archmeet Abyss. Now, I'll give you a nice scenario. Let's say I don't feel like playing any of these cards, but I can play quick play spells in my deck. I can play uh, things like Shared Ride, Forbidden Chalice against other combo decks, uh, Twin Twisters if my locals is full of back row heavy strategies, things like that. I can just set the card. Now, if my opponent activates Dark Ruler no more and I'm playing a Guard Dragon in this base deck, I can just chain the Shared Ride to the, um, the Dark Ruler spell and then proceed to chain hot red in response to my own shared ride and target the dark ruler no more and turn it off that is completely legal because you cannot activate monster effects in response to that card but you're activating hot red in response to shared ride so it is completely legal that is one of the best ways to get around that card for those of you who are actually worried about this card again this card has a lot of it's really strong, but it has its own built-in check and balance. That's why I like the card. The biggest issue with Nibiru is the fact that there's extremely limited ways to stop this card, and it almost seems like there is no check and balance to the card. I do agree that there needs to be ways to out boards, but they need to also have a check and balance to it, to where it's not just seemingly unstoppable. So, how do we deal with this card? Now, before I get into the more generic ways, there are a couple combo-ish based decks that do have a natural advantage against this card. Um, so, Pendulums, for instance. You know, a lot of people have mentioned Pendulums and how if you have access to Serving, you can summon Jackal from the deck before committing your fifth summon. So, if you want just a natural advantage against the card, then congratulations, you got one in the form of Servant and Jackal. Now, there is another deck out there that, you know, people may not be aware of, but I'm talking to you, Orcus. Orcus, I'm sorry, but you may have to play Nightmare Corruptor Ibli back in your main deck if you really do not want to auto lose to this card. Reason being is because if Ibli is on your opponent's field, then well, they can't drop Nibiru because it's not a Link monster. Plain and simple. So, I suggest Orcus players get those copies of Nightmare Corruptor Ibli out of your bulk or whatever, or if you didn't, don't have them, pick up a playset and put them back in your deck because, uh, yeah, that Ibli will save your ass. Now, let's get on to 
are five generic options. I've, I've, I've been surfing online and these are the only five generic options I can think of. One I already kind of hinted off at, and that is Cypher and Gear Gamma with Lambia on the board. Plain and simple. But the biggest problem with this is if you were playing Guard Dragons, you're not going to keep that Lambia on the board. You're not, and you're not going to. And if you even try to make Agrippine, it has to be, there needs to be either a Skull Dread on top. Yeah, there has to be a Skull Dread for you to resolve Agrippine, period. Period, point blank. Which means Lambia is probably not going to be on the field, which is a problem. So, you know, you, you literally have to keep that on the board the entire time. If you are anticipating in a Nibiru and Doing that means you're not going to resolve Agrippine, you're not going to make Skuldred, you're going to be locked into Dragons Forever. In fact, you won't even be able to reveal the Gamma because you're locked under Guard Dragons anyway. So, um, I feel like if you're not playing Guard Dragons and you can afford to keep Lambie on the board, you can do that. But it's not the most optimal choice. It's unfortunate. But, hey... Lambia has very, very limited options to deal with uh, a card like that. So another way you can deal with this is Outer Entity as a thought. Now, the biggest deck that comes to mind that can easily do this and still combo off would be Crusadia Guard Dragon. Um, reason being is because you can max out Magius. Uh, you now have the uh, that Wind Dragon, that's the, the Charmer Dragon that summons itself when there's a spellcast on the board. So... Picture this, I start with a Boria and I link into, let's say, a Magius. And I have a Maximus and that Wind Dragon in hand. Since uh, Magius is a spellcaster, I can just best summon that Wind Dragon. That's fine, I'll summon it out of the zone though. So that's one summon, two summons with Magius, three off of that. Now I can special summon Maximus, it's this low four. So that's my fourth summon. Well. I don't know. I have to read Nibiru. Does Nibiru count as, uh, does it count normal summon too, or does it just count special summon? If it just counts special summon, then it's, uh, fine. Um, so you would summon that, you would search your Draco, whatever. Then you would overlay those two into a Niarla, and then drop Azathoth on top of it. You know, you can't respond to Azathoth. So, at that point in the combo, then you could just link the Azathoth and the Magius off into your, um, your your Crusadia that moves things over at that point. So if you're fearing your Nibiru, fear no more because now I have a board. Now my opponent can't reveal this card. Again, I have to look at the card again to see if it counts the normal summon. Um, if it counts the normal summon, that can be a big deal. So, um, but not every deck can reliably put uh, commit two level fours into a rank four and still be able to combo if that makes any sense especially since it's summon condition is so easily met because five summons is very 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 few it's really not that much at all now when i guess Ron mckell asked people how many summons is a fair amount of summons and i and a lot of people said five i'm like okay this must be casual players they're talking about because even like semi-competitive players would know that five summons is nothing or you know 10 would be i guess a good number but whatever that's besides the point um the next three cards they're bad cards i'm not gonna lie they're bad cards but as i would used to say bad cards are only acceptable to play if they are the only viable options and all of these options are spell cards and they're bad for a myriad of different reasons because they affect you as well sometimes. So we're gonna just put all three of them on the screen. Exchange, Drag Down to the Grave, and DD Designator. These cards are bad, but they're probably your best options in terms of preemptively ripping this card out of your hand and not have, requiring any kind of investment into other things and not requiring you to play these other cards or playing two cards in your extra deck like Niarla and Azathoth and clogging up your extra deck with things that you don't need, uh, things like that. So let's start with the first one. We all know what Exchange does. This is a very old card. We even see it in the anime. 
Both players reveal their hands and they each take one card from their opponent's hand and add it to the opponent's hand. So if you summon your one card combo, if all you need is one card and the rest of the cards in your hand don't really matter too much to you, and you play this card and you see Nibiru in their hand, just take it. Just take it so they don't use it on you. Yeah, they'll probably take your call by the grave or whatever, but at this point, it doesn't matter. I just want to be sure that this card does not get dropped on me. Same thing with Drag Down to the Grave. Now, I wouldn't prefer this one because it gets your opponent deeper into their deck. You know, I could discard their Nibiru, but what if they draw into another Nibiru? Or what if they draw into Dark Roller No More? Uh, things like that. Just the, the potential of what else they could just draw into is kind of a deter for me to want to play that card in particular. Now, the last one, which is going to be my pick of as to what I'm going to play, is DD Designator. Um, for those of you who don't know, DD Designator is a really old card, and you declare one card name. If it is in your opponent's hand, um, they have to banish it, but keep in mind, it also on the card says, look at their hand. So they do have to reveal their hand. They do, in fact, have to reveal. So, if you do see it you get to banish it but if it is not in their hand a random card in your hand gets banished now you guys may think that's bad in a sense but one you still got knowledge of your opponent's hand you know what you now have to play around and all that other kinds of stuff so best case scenario if they do have the nibiru then you just got it out of their hand you don't have to worry about it you know you summon your one card combo uh, before you activate this card you're good to go However, worst case scenario, you know, you don't have to deal with it. And yeah, a random card in your hand gets banished, but I already put my one card combo onto the board and I'm good to go. You know, and the reason why I like this card is because it the card that gets banished is random. You know, your opponent doesn't look at your hand and choose the best card in your hand to take with exchange or choose the best card in the, you know, the next best card in your hand to discard with drag down to the grave. You know, that's why I like this card a little bit better because, you know, it's randomized. Your opponent doesn't get to pick, you know, what card leaves the hand. So you, they could choose the worst card out of the hand. Now, again, these cards are bad. I'm not going to stress that enough. However, these are the only options I have personally found that can deal with this card preemptively because a card like this needs to be preemptively ripped or preemptively dealt with before you hit that fifth summon. And it's unfortunate how there's almost no check and balance to this card. I know I spent a lot of time talking about Nibiru, but again, as a combo player, I know that this giant meteor is the biggest problem uh, that combo decks will have to face because Dark Ruler No More has its own check and balance that I can easily exploit. This Nibiru is damn near unstoppable. I, I literally had to look online and just search keywords where like regarding revealing cards out of hand or you know, you know, just things that just let me get knowledge and look at my opponent's hand, and just rip cards from it. And things like that. And I found those three cards. So combo players, I suggest you pick up like one or like two of these three cards. Oh, those three spell cards I have mentioned because they can also help you with other things even if they don't have it you know things like dragging down to the grave if you see that there is a dark ruler no more in your opponent's hand then you know you need to rip it you know things like that or exchange you know you just take it whatever if you don't want to get your opponent deeper into their deck so this took a while but I figured this is a very very important topic to talk about because these cards are very, very powerful, and they will see play. Now, they're not, uh, especially Dark Ruler No More, I feel like that has a little more hype than what it's warranted, and people are really underlooking Nibiru. Now, granted, Nibiru sucks past turn one, uh, because, you know, if you drop it, um, when your opponent has a board, yeah, I know you could search it off Granite, Loyalist, whatever, but are you really going to do that when you have a board, and then your opponent has a board? and you tribute your monsters because keep in mind it tributes all monsters on the board and their monsters they get a huge huge ass token and could just probably one shot you because of how strong it is i don't i mean i guarantee some people will make that mistake 
but whatever uh anyway guys let me know what you guys think about these options that i have shown you to deal with those two cards being dark ruler no more and nibiru yeah just the big meteor so uh yeah let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below thank you guys so much for watching this is jay money and i am signing out through the wastelands through the highway